Charlotte's team, he's working off of a couple of stream, screens, rather. Can't get him on the inbound, but Sigma finds him there. It's guarded very tightly by Bo Kong. As we approach nine minutes remaining in the second half, leaves it for Sigma in the low post. You notice the pivot? That's the Sigma Who's move. Who's that look like? The Sigma move. Can't <laughs> get it to fall. If Luke Sigma, the son of the famous Jack Sigma, played 14 years in the NBA with Seattle and the Bucks. And I asked him to show me the Sigma move before the game, and that was pretty much it. He doesn't get the ball behind his head like his father, but he does the Sigma move better than anybody in college basketball. And it, it was kind of interesting. He was telling us about how, how he's been blessed to have such good coaches. He said his dad was really cerebral. Think the game. Look identify the defense and execute. And now he comes and plays for Coach Reveno. He said that, that Rev is more about fundamentals, the footwork and the leverage. What a great combination for a young player to get schooled that way. His dad, Jack, was a 6'11", son Luke, 6'8". But Jack was a seven-time All-Star in the NBA and once led the league at 6'11". The NBA, that is, in free throw percentage, something pretty rare in the NBA these days. Yeah, Dad's a better free throw shooter than Son. Kong knocks down the three. That's a big answer for Gonzaga to extend the lead back up to six with eight and a half left. Isn't that pretty amazing that, that Kong leads this conference in three-point shooting with his length? Shot up no good, and Goodson wants to push. Almost stolen by Rivio. Kong, another three, no. And a loose ball foul underneath. Let's take a look at Luke Sigma, find out a little bit more about him in our ESPNU campus connection. His favorite book, Jurassic Park, loves watching the Food Network, and in particular, Guy Fiore. And his favorite player, Dwight Howard, certainly has a, the rebounding knack of Dwight Howard and being able to go and find those balls off the rims. Uh, I, um, I, I spent two years with Jack Sigma as a teammate with the Seattle Supersonics, and what a great person he is. He and his wife, Sean, have done a wonderful job with their boys. Goodson gets caught on the elbow back out for Harris. He has 16 points in this game, works it back around. Kong on the baseline over Sigma, uses the rim to guard his shot. You see the depth of this Gonzaga team. Kong coming in off the bench. Olenek has seven off the bench, another freshman. Yeah, when you watch Bull Kong, don't you think of Lou Aldang? Turnover, Bolden. Bounce pass for Goodson, up. Can't get it, Bolden with the put back in the air. And just like that, it's back up to a 10-point lead for the Zags. Uh, do they have one more run left in them. They've come so close to tying this game, but have not been able to just get to that tying bucket. They've pulled it within two at one point, and it's back to 10. And Coach Reveno wants to talk it over a little bit. Slow in developing that offensive set in the half court is something that he admittedly has said his team has struggled with. He wants to get on the fast break. Playing this Gonzaga team who has won nine straight regular season West Coast Conference titles. That puts them in a tie for fourth all time. And look at some of these other teams. They're tied with the Adolph Rupp teams of Kentucky from 1944 to 1952, and of course, John Wooden's UCLA teams at the top. Yeah, look at that, you've got Jerry Tarkanian. How about UConn back when they played in the Yankee Conference? You're familiar with that conference, I, I don't right? really remember the Yankee Conference. <laughs> but, but you know what? Not what, exactly the Big East, is it? <laughs> Mark Few is, is really carving out a place in the history books. When you talk about the best career starts in their first 11 seasons, Mark Few is on a list with some pretty impressive guys, and you like his winning percentage too, don't you? Yeah, second active among coaches behind Roy Williams, and 
We mentioned that he's going for the 10 straight regular season conference titles, but also 12 straight championship game appearances in conference as he has a 10 point lead over Portland. 18th ranked Gonzaga with a 62-52 lead over the Portland Pilots with 7.02 remaining here in the Child Center on the campus of the University of Portland. And women's college basketball continues on ESPNU Sunday with two games. Action begins in the Big East at 1 Eastern as C. Vivian Stringer's Rutgers Scarlet Knights take on the Pittsburgh Panthers. Then at 6 Eastern catch an SEC showdown as the Florida Gators face the Georgia Bulldogs. It's women's college basketball on ESPNU Sunday. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Updating our star watch, Matt Bolden has done it all. He's scored, he's passed. Not fantastic shooting from the field, but Nick Rivio as well has had a fairly quiet night. Yeah, I, I was reading on ESPN today, the power rankings, Gonzaga is the best team, Steve, which I think is pretty impressive, Gonzaga west of the Rocky Mountains. And, and, and I don't think it's even close. This team is the hunted. They, they played great competition, and they just continue rolling over. We, we talked to Mark Few today at Shootaround and said, look, if you can go back to the first day of practice, October 15th, and know with this schedule that your team could have this kind of a record, 11-3, and three, would you take it? He said he'd take it in a heartbeat. <laughs> In a heartbeat, he said. Pac-10 certainly down this year. A couple of good teams in the Mountain West, but certainly not at the caliber of this Gonzaga team so far as Campbell launches a three off the backboard and rim, but Kong can't come up with the rebound. I have never seen the Pac-10 so weak. It's incredible. And, and I know they've had 12 players drafted into the NBA the last two years, but, but they are so down. Oregon was a surprise, only eight wins a year ago as they have a foul underneath. You see who it go against. Goes against, it'll go against Harris. That's his second foul. Oregon, a team that only won eight games a year ago and opened up with a couple of wins at Washington and Washington State to begin Pac-10 play. But here in Portland, it's a 10-point lead for Gonzaga. And a foul. Goodson thought he had the steal, but it'll get called for the foul, and that is his fourth. Goodson, the brother of Mike Goodson, the former Texas A&M running back, drafted by the Carolina Panthers in this last draft in the fourth round, so he certainly comes from an athletic background. It is the fifth team foul on Gonzaga, so just one more to give before Portland will go to the line. Campbell. Drives up and under, no good. The follow, though, by Smelters doesn't fall, but a foul. So two free throws coming for him. He's really asserted himself in this game. Yeah, I, I like him a lot, and you would have thought going in that Sacre and Harris would have had a strong advantage in the paint. But the fact that Smelters has brought some macho to his game today has really kept this battle close inside. Smelters 15 points on six of seven shooting. He'll go to the line where he's three of six today. They get three of seven. It, it just kills you when you're trying to make a comeback and you miss free throws. He was born in Germany, he's a native of the Netherlands where he was a member of the senior Dutch national team as he knocks down the second one, his 16th point of the game. That leads Portland to the four ahead of Jared Stolt. 6.30 remaining, it's back down to single digits. Gonzaga up by nine and Harris just pulls up in and out, Niedermeyer with the rebound, a much needed one for this Portland team. Quickly to Stoll, bounce pass inside, low post, Smelters again, and he doesn't care. He has had Sacre on him, he has had Harris on him, and it hasn't mattered tonight. 18 points for the 6'10 senior. Stephen Gray looking for the answer to Bolden. Bolden's tied his career high with eight assists. 
Up, no good. Tip by Olenek, no good, but he gets it on a third try. Count the bucket and a foul, and he will go with a chance to tie his career high. He has nine points, one away from setting that mark. Uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't think I can recall any team right now that brings the kind of size off their bench as Gonzaga. They, they really have done a wonderful job this year, especially when you consider that Austin...